Hello and welcome to another tech tip video. As always, I am Seth LeBlond and I am the Assistive Technology Coordinator at the Foundation for Blind Children. I have with me today via Teams um, an old colleague of mine, a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Jeremy Schmidt and he works on an accessibility team for McGraw-Hill Publishing. And I thought that we would have Jeremy come on today and talk a little bit about electronic textbooks and what McGraw-Hill is doing to make those textbooks accessible and what students who are using McGraw-Hill textbooks can do to get accessible content. Hi, Jeremy. Welcome. Hey, Seth. Thanks for having me. Thank you for agreeing to join us. So first of all, what is your, um, do you have a title? I love a title. Yep. You got it. Yes. So I'm the academic accessibility tester and a member of our um, accessibility team with McGraw Hill. I think it's really cool that McGraw Hill has an accessibility team with actual people on it who test the accessibility of their stuff. Um, full disclosure, are, do you use a set, uh, assistive technology yourself, Jeremy? Yeah, that's a great question. I do. So I've been a longtime JAWS user, um, NVDA or narrator voiceover on my phone. But yeah, so um, not just is McGraw testing, but they um, they have the right people in place to test. I think so. They put you in there. So that that already bolsters my confidence. Um, so as you know, lots of folks who are watching this video are concerned with education. And so I'm wondering if you can tell me a little bit about the process that you guys have in place to uh, make accessible content. What what do you get a book? that that McGraw Hill is publishing and they they want to make sure it's accessible. What what's the process? What do you do? So as you can imagine, it is quite a process. And what we like to see are our academic design teams um, implement accessibility and be conscious and aware of accessibility throughout the entire design process. So we have content creators who you know are, are specialists in education who actually write the questions let's say we're creating a, a maybe a test and they'll write the questions but then you have an, a designer basically a graphic designer who needs to design the question and the layout of of the test and the material um, and so from the very beginning we like seeing the designers being aware of accessibility and um, thinking of it from the very beginning <clears throat> so they then will um put together a proof of concept or a prototype um kind of in a digital sandbox if you will and hand it over then to our team the accessibility team for testing um myself or one of the other members i'm not alone on our team will go through the content with a screen reader well with two screen readers at least several different web browsers um and we're looking at all types of accessibility you and i are focusing on screen readers but of course we're concerned about color contrast and um, the direction line of the question ensuring that it's clear and concise um, so we'll write a report on our findings on the accessibility of that content and then give that back to the team to make revisions and it's a process and we'll go back and forth a few times and then we do use some contractors and some third party um, companies to then do a final review, get a fresh set of eyes on it, if you will, and um, uh, go through it one final time. So we have many, many um, uh, steps in place to make sure all of our digital content is accessible. Wow, that's really cool. So I think we used to call it universal design. We call it inclusive design now. And so that's the idea is uh, that that you guys are trying to design the content to be inclusive and accessible from the ground up. This is a, a thought that you have when when you start working on the material and then you you kind of go through and double check and make any changes that are needed after that as well. Kind of kind of getting it from two two sides, I think is really cool. Um, what kinds of 
uh, like formats are these things uh, available in? So we have an accessible electronic text, and there's actually another uh, tech tip in our in our catalog where we talk about how just because something is in a format that can be made accessible doesn't mean that it necessarily is. We talked about PDFs, for example, as a as an example of that. Um, uh, HTML content is another example. It can be accessible and often is accessible, but it's not necessarily accessible. But when when someone gets an electronic uh, textbook, an accessible electronic textbook from um, McGraw Hill, what uh, kinds of file formats are we talking about? Are they is it EPUB, PDF, HTML, all of the above? Right. So that's a good question and. We have multiple different products and different groups. Um, a school group, which would be like K through 12. We have a higher education group and some other groups. But generally speaking, our content is delivered through what we refer to as an online learning platform. So it's going to be a website that you're logging into. Um, your school district usually will have your login credentials. Um, and through the online portal then is where you'll access your courses and your assessments and um, any other resources or assets that that might be available to you. Um, so along those lines, some of those other assets for the student or the teacher, because we're obviously building the teacher side of this as well. Um, all of the assets that are outside of the online learning platform will include Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, PDFs, um, other types of assets for the teacher to use in the classroom. And so that's then um, a big initiative of ours is making sure all digital content, not just a website, the online learning platform, but all digital content, meaning the PowerPoints, the Word docs, the PDFs are accessible. So, um, you know, as an example, um, we have PDFs that are intended to be printed by a, a printer to hand out in class and students may um, use crayons to color in objects. Let's say these are young kindergartners. Well, instead of delivering that PDF as is, we would like to see form fields on those objects that they're supposed to color. So mm -hmm. a screen reader user could check a checkbox instead of coloring in the picture. Um, and so all digital content, whether it's online or um, a Microsoft Office product or PDF even uh, will be accessible. That's awesome. That 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 I neglected to mention that in my list, right? Micro, not all Microsoft Word documents are necessarily accessible. We we think of Microsoft Word as an accessible format, but unless you intentionally go and make sure that the content can be read and edited with with uh, through the use of a screen reader. Um, it's not necessarily if you've got something you need to color in, then, you know, thinking about how you want to do that with with form different kinds of controls, form fields um, exactly. is, is super important. So I think that's that's cool that that um, you guys are thinking of it to that level. It um, is. Yeah, if I'm if I may, another example would be um, in math, you know, you may have a math problem that has a, we'll call it a widget or a tool online that's asking a student to draw a chart or a graph on maybe an X, Y axis. Um, all of our online content, if, if the word draw um, <coughs> is ever used, below that problem will be another option um, to give a text entry answer. So I'm drawing a line from this point to this point on this angle. Um, so it, it, we we definitely think about it um, throughout all of our content. If if we're saying draw, well, we'll give another option of a text entry option or a paragraph entry option. Um, if we're saying color in a circle, we'll put a checkbox in the circle so someone can check it. So it flows throughout all of our content. That is super cool. Now, um, are there resources for educators? Um, like uh, there, okay, so so now a school has decided to to use McGraw Hill for their textbooks, which I think seems like a good idea for um, for blind and visually impaired kids um, based on this conversation. Um, are there resources like 
to get some help, like for teachers who are not familiar with how the content is used. So there, like, um, yeah, teacher teachers confused, they need a little guidance. There are, there's even a, a live chat for the teacher um, that's staffed. And so if even in real time, if a <laughs> teacher needs to uh, just ask a quick question about content, um, so, and then we do have our accessibility team and um, others in the accessibility department that field calls, can answer calls, can provide content from the past that wasn't accessible. So, you know, moving forward, we, we can't roll back the clocks, but moving forward, you know, everything we put out will be accessible, but maybe there's something from the past that needs to be remediated. And so we have those resources as well. Um, I can, maybe you could link it uh, in the description mm -hmm. later, but I'll send you some information on how teachers can contact us. Yes, I will definitely, definitely um, include that here in the video and uh, make sure that we get that done. This is really cool. It seems like uh, McGraw-Hill is really on the cutting edge of providing accessible digital content. Um, so, you know, I, I, I obviously, um, not all school districts use uh, stuff from McGraw Hill, but it is one thing that they can do to address some accessibility concerns and not just for totally blind folks, but like you were saying, for people who need, um, you know, visually uh, contrasted material or they, you know, they need they need more accessible material from the low vision standpoint. Sounds like um, we got all our bases covered and it's really cool. I think it's great. It's a, it's a, a supportive environment. Um, and I think it's something that, um, you know, I, I hope that SPED directors, um, teachers, uh, school districts are really thinking about, you know, when they, when they decide what textbooks and, and learning materials they want to invest in, I hope that they consider, um, you know, the the potential accessibility of that material first, and uh, give uh, McGraw Hill a nice long look, because it sounds like, um, you know, that that can be a really nice option for uh, serving low vision and blind students. I appreciate you being here, Jeremy, and uh, and explaining some of this to us today, and um, I think this has been great. Um, I hope that everybody else out there has enjoyed this too. And we will be back again soon with another um, tech tip video. Thanks everyone.